Hey everybody, it's Chris with Xano, and today I'm going to talk to you about all of the filters that we have related to working with timestamps. Timestamps in Xano are stored in a Unix epoch format, which just means it's a big long string of numbers that isn't really human readable. So there's a lot of things we can do to make sure that that's readable. There's also a lot of things we can do as far as calculations on those timestamps, pulling specific data out of those timestamps, and we can do those in custom queries on our database or in other places in our function stack. So we're going to go over all of that today. I hope you find this helpful. We'll have timestamps down in the description if you're looking for an explanation on a specific filter, or feel free to just bookmark this video for future reference later on. Let's go ahead and get into it, shall we? So here we are in Xano. I'm just querying all records from one of my tables and returning the result. So filters can vary a little bit based on whether you are performing a query on your database or if you are just, let's say, creating or updating a variable. These are two entirely different systems that are working together in Xano. So that means there are certain things you can do in one place that you can't do in another. So that's why we're going through both sets of these today. So I'm querying all records from this people data database. You can see we have ID created at first name, last name, email, and profession. Okay, so this created at, this is a timestamp in milliseconds. Again, the timestamps that Xano stores are in Unix epoch format, which is essentially the number of seconds since uh, January 1st, 1970. And that we just count up from there. That's the format of this timestamp. This is in milliseconds. So if we take this timestamp, which is in milliseconds, and we put it into a converter, just paste it in here, you can see we get a human readable timestamp. So let's talk about some of the things we can do to help query against this timestamp value, okay? So I'm gonna go into my query here and I'm gonna click this little pencil so we can edit the custom query and I'm going to add a conditional. And I'm gonna say where created at equals something, we'll worry about that later. And then I'm gonna to go to add filter and let's take a look at all of our timestamp filters that are available. So we do have a number of them. So the first one on the list is epoch ms subtract seconds. So this subtracts a number of seconds from the timestamp. When would I use this? So uh, maybe I want to find all records that were made 30 seconds ago. Okay, so I'm going to say where people data dot created at equals, and then I'm going to type in now. And what now is, is this is the timestamp right now. That's all it is, very simple. So I'm going to use timestamp now and I'm going to add a filter on this side and I'm gonna subtract seconds. I'm gonna say, let's subtract 60 seconds and let's actually change this operator to less than. And we'll go ahead and save this and we'll run. And there's our results. Now all these timestamps are pretty close together because we just imported data to set up this test. So. Uh, we're not really going to see much of a difference here, but you can at least understand that the way we're working with this is we are using epoch ms subtract seconds to subtract an amount of seconds from a timestamp in a custom query. The next few filters all just add to a timestamp. So we can add a number of days, we can add hours, minutes, months, seconds, or years. Very simple. Let's go ahead and let's try timestamp add days and let's add two days. So now we are looking for any created at dates that are less than now plus two days, which means we should still get every single result in the table. Very simple. But if I reverse my operator, we should be returned no results. There we go. And that is the same for all of the other filters that are similar to add days. So we have hours, minutes, months, seconds, and years. Scrolling down a little bit, we also have a few more that are similar. We have timestamp day of month, timestamp day of week, and timestamp day of year. So let's take a look at timestamp day of week. So what this allows you to do is get the day of the week from the timestamp. So let's do this on our people data created at, and we will apply that timestamp day of week filter. So for this, I could do if the timestamp day of week is greater than one, okay? Let's go ahead and save this and we'll run. So we should return every single result right now. But if I go back and I change this and let's say I wanna check the seventh day of the week, we should be returned nothing. 
because all of these records were created before the seventh day of the week. And those same options apply to all of the other similar filters there. So we have day of month and day of year. Moving forward, we have another set of filters called timestamp epoch day, hour, minute, and second. So these will get the number of days, hours, minutes, or seconds since the Unix epoch. So let's say I wanted to provide two timestamps to this query and make a calculation based on the number of seconds. Let's go ahead and apply this filter. And I'm actually going to get a current timestamp here. So let's go ahead and copy this and we'll paste it right in here. And the first thing I need to do is I need to multiply this by a thousand to convert it into milliseconds. Okay. And now I'm going to apply the same filter. And if I update this, we should receive no results because what we're doing is we're taking a timestamp from basically now a little bit in the past now, of course, because it's in milliseconds. So we're looking for records that were created after that timestamp that we just grabbed. Okay. So if I run this, we get nothing, but let's go into the database real quick and let's just add a new record. Okay, so there's our record. So let's go back to the API and let's run this and we should see that new record. There it is. And again, you can do this with any of these similar filters, minute, hour, and day. The filters below those, again, pretty similar. Timestamp hour, timestamp minute, and timestamp month. So we can return those values and get a little bit more specific with our query with those. And then we have some calculation. And then we have some calculation filters. So we have subtract days, hours, minutes, months, and years. Okay. So let's take a quick look at those. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use that now timestamp again. And I'm going to say, I want to find records that were created after, let's say like seven days ago. So let's go down here and let's do subtract days. I'm going to subtract seven days. And let's go ahead and save that and we'll run and that should return us our entire data set. There it is. And then down at the bottom, we just have timestamp week and timestamp year, which are very similar to these timestamp hour, minute and month filters. So those are all of the filters that work inside custom queries related to timestamps. Now we can take a look at some filters that actually work inside other areas of the function stack. So let's just go ahead and use now here to get a current timestamp and let's go to add filter and let's go over to timestamp. So we have a few more in here. Some of them are similar and then some of them are very different. So the first couple that we have add milliseconds to timestamp and add seconds to timestamp. These will add or subtract milliseconds and seconds from timestamps. So if I add one of these, if I wanted to add milliseconds to the timestamp, just put a value in there and you're done. If I wanted to subtract, I could use a negative value. Very simple. Okay. Now let's go back to the filters and these are going to be the big ones. These are probably going to be the filters that we're going to use the most. Okay. So let's take a look at format timestamp. Format timestamp allows you to take that Unix epoch formatted timestamp that Xano stores and convert it into a human readable format with some customization in there so you can get it looking exactly the way that you want, okay? So the options that we have here are for a format and a time zone. So let's talk about what we would put in these boxes. So format timestamp follows the PHP date time format. We have this linked in our documentation. I'll make sure to put it down in the description below as well. Let's take a quick look at this page. So you can see we have a ton of options here, right? Uh, various representations of days, days of the week, years, months, times, time zones, all sorts of stuff in here, right? So you can get pretty specific with the human readable timestamp that you want. I'm going to make this example super simple, and I'm just going to put the letter R in here, which will just give us a full, complete, readable timestamp. So let's go ahead and save this. And let's turn off our query because we're not using that anymore. And let's add this new variable to our response and we'll run. There is our human readable timestamp. Very simple. So now if we go back, let's say I want to show a text representation of the day. So let's go update this. 
I'll go back to my format. I'll put a capital D. And let's say I want to show, let's say I want to show the text representation of a month. So let's put that in there. And let's go ahead and throw a year in here as well. Uh, so that's going to be, it looks like a lowercase o. And we'll save this and we'll update this. And now we'll run. There it is. So let's talk about time zones. Something to remember right up front is there are no time zones stored in timestamps in Xano because we're just counting up the number of seconds from January 1st, 1970. So there's no time zone associated with that. So how do we work around that? Well, we have a time zone option in the format timestamp filter, which you can see a quick list of just right here on Wikipedia. Let's go ahead and grab a time zone out of here. So I'm just going to copy this one right here and we'll go back to Xano and let's go ahead and switch this format back to a more uh, easy to read format and we'll save this and we'll run it so you can see this timestamp right now. And now if we go back to format timestamp, we just fill in our new time zone and we'll update that. And we are now given this timestamp. You can see we have a plus 800 here. So that indicates that we are now reading this timestamp based on the time zone that we've provided. So now let's talk about the parse timestamp filter. Parse timestamp takes a human readable timestamp and converts it back into a Unix epoch format timestamp for storage in your database. Or if you just prefer to work with a timestamp in that format, whatever you'd like to do. So let's go ahead and type in a date here. And we'll go ahead and add filter and we'll go to parse timestamp. So now we need to get our format. So we're referring to the PHP date time format again. The format for this is going to be F J S comma and then a capital Y. And we'll go ahead and update this and save. And now if we run this, we should see a Unix epoch formatted timestamp. The last filter that we're going to talk about today is called transform timestamp. So this takes a timestamp and applies some type of transformation to it, okay? So let's say I wanted to take my timestamp and subtract seven days from it. So let's go ahead and let's get the timestamp for this value. And I'm going to go ahead and copy this. And that's going to be my new value, okay? And let's get rid of the parse timestamp and let's go ahead and add our transform timestamp filter. And let's say I want to subtract seven days. We'll update this and we'll save. So now if we run, there's our new timestamp, but let's go ahead and turn this back into a human readable format using the format timestamp filter. So if we run this one more time, there is our date with seven days subtracted. I know I said the filter before was the last filter, but I lied. This is the last filter. And this is actually under the transformation category, which we'll have a whole video on later. But I do want to show it to you because it's related to timestamps. This filter is called to timestamp, which converts a text expression to a timestamp format. So if we add this filter and let's say I type in yesterday and we'll go ahead and save this. And let's take a look and see what that returns. So you can see we get a timestamp related to yesterday. I could also do seven days ago. Save this and we run it again. There's our timestamp. Let's go ahead and make these readable. Again, using the format timestamp filter. So taking a look at our seven days ago, you can see that was September 22nd. So you can get pretty flexible with your value here. It's very simple to use. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope this helps give you a better understanding of the various timestamp filters that we have available in Xano. If you have any questions, definitely leave them down in the comments below. Be sure to hit a like and subscribe while you're down there if you haven't already. Thanks so much for watching and we will see you in the next one.